Few events in human history have cast as dark a shadow as the bubonic plague. This terrifying disease, known for its agonizing symptoms and devastating mortality rates, has left an indelible mark on our collective memory and history. From ancient times to the modern era, the plague has emerged time and again, a grim reminder of nature's power and the fragility of human existence. Its impact extends beyond the countless lives lost, shaping the course of empires, altering the social fabric, and influencing the development of medicine itself. The plague's relentless assault on humanity has left us with a legacy of fear and fascination that endures. It serves as a stark reminder of our vulnerability to invisible threats, a sobering testament to the capricious nature of disease. Even today, centuries after its most devastating outbreaks, the bubonic plague continues to hold us in its grip, a haunting echo of a time when death stalked the streets and fear ruled. The bubonic plague, a bacterial infection, derives its name from the Greek word bubo, meaning swollen gland. This name is a direct reference to one of the most notorious symptoms of the disease. This gruesome symptom, characterized by painful, pus-filled swellings in the lymph nodes, is a hallmark of the disease. These swellings, or bubos, can appear in the groin, armpit, or neck, and are often accompanied by intense pain and discomfort, caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis. The plague is primarily spread through the bites of infected fleas. These tiny parasites latch onto their hosts, injecting the deadly bacteria into the bloodstream with each bite. These fleas, often carried by rodents, particularly rats, act as vectors, transmitting the deadly bacteria from animal to human. In medieval times, the close proximity of humans and rats in crowded towns and cities facilitated the rapid spread of the disease. Once inside the human body, Yersinia pestis multiplies rapidly, overwhelming the immune system. The bacteria spread through the lymphatic system, causing the characteristic buboes, and can also enter the bloodstream, leading to septicemia. Along with the telltale buboes, the plague manifests in a range of debilitating symptoms, including high fever, chills, weakness, and agonizing pain. These symptoms can appear suddenly and escalate quickly, leaving the afflicted in a state of severe distress. Historically, the plague manifested in three main forms, bubonic, septicemic, and mnemonic. Each form has its own unique set of symptoms and modes of transmission, making the disease particularly challenging to combat. Bubonic plague, the most common form, affects the lymphatic system. The swollen lymph nodes or buboes are a direct result of the bacteria's attack on the lymphatic system. Septicemic plague occurs when the bacteria enter the bloodstream, causing blood poisoning. This form of the disease can lead to severe sepsis, resulting in tissue damage, organ failure, and death if not treated promptly. Mnemonic plague, the deadliest form, affects the lungs and can be spread through coughing or sneezing. This form of the plague is highly contagious and can lead to respiratory failure and death within a matter of days. The speed and severity of the plague's progression have instilled terror in populations for centuries. Outbreaks of the plague have led to widespread panic, social upheaval, and significant loss of life throughout history. Without prompt treatment, the disease can rapidly progress to organ failure and death. The mortality rate for untreated plague is extremely high, making early diagnosis and intervention critical. Even today, the plague remains a serious threat in some parts of the world, a stark reminder of the importance of public health measures and disease surveillance. Modern medicine has made significant strides in treating and preventing the plague, but vigilance is still necessary to prevent outbreaks. Advances in antibiotics and improved sanitation have greatly reduced the impact of the plague, but the bacterium Yersinia pestis still exists in nature, primarily in rodent populations. Ongoing research and monitoring are essential to keep this ancient scourge at bay. Global health organizations continue to work together to monitor and respond to plague outbreaks, ensuring that this deadly disease does not regain a foothold in human populations. Through international cooperation and scientific innovation, we can hope to keep the terror of the plague confined to the pages of history. In the centuries before antibiotics, treating the bubonic plague was a desperate and often futile endeavor. The lack of effective medical knowledge and the absence of modern technology meant that those afflicted with the plague faced grim prospects. The disease, caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, spread rapidly and with devastating consequences. Lacking a true understanding of the disease's cause or transmission, medieval physicians resorted to a variety of ineffective and often harmful treatments. 
They believed in balancing the body's humors and often relied on superstitions and unproven theories. The medical practices of the time were rudimentary at best, and many treatments did more harm than good. Bloodletting, a common practice at the time, involved draining large quantities of blood from the patient, further weakening them. This method was based on the belief that removing bad blood could cure the patient, but in reality, it often led to severe blood loss and increased vulnerability to infections. Other treatments included applying leeches, lancing buboes, and using various poultices. Leeches were thought to draw out the disease, while lancing buboes, the swollen lymph nodes characteristic of the plague, was intended to release the infection. However, these methods were largely ineffective and could cause additional pain and suffering, and administering concoctions of herbs and minerals. These remedies were often based on traditional knowledge and folklore, with little scientific basis. Some mixtures included ingredients like mercury, arsenic, and other toxic substances, which could be more harmful than the disease itself. Desperate measures reflected the desperation of the times. People turned to any available remedy, no matter how outlandish, in the hope of finding a cure. The fear and panic that gripped communities led to widespread use of these dubious treatments. Quarantine, the isolation of the sick and those who had come into contact with them, emerged as a rudimentary but somewhat effective means of controlling the plague's spread. This practice involved isolating entire households or even neighborhoods to prevent the disease from spreading further. Cities were often sealed off, with guards posted at the gates to prevent entry and exit. This measure aimed to contain the disease within certain areas though it also led to significant economic and social disruptions. The sick were confined to their homes or to designated plague hospitals, often left to die alone and in agony. These hospitals were overcrowded and lacked proper sanitation, making them breeding grounds for further infections. The advent of antibiotics in the 20th century revolutionized the treatment of bacterial infections, including the plague. With the discovery of antibiotics like streptomycin and tetracycline, doctors could effectively combat the bacteria responsible for the disease. Today, the disease is treatable with readily available antibiotics such as streptomycin and tetracycline. These medications can significantly reduce the mortality rate if administered promptly. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial as the plague can still be fatal if not addressed promptly. Modern diagnostic techniques allow for quick identification of the disease, enabling timely intervention. Modern public health measures including rodent control, surveillance, and vaccination programs have significantly reduced the incidence of plague outbreaks. By targeting the primary vectors of the disease, such as rats and fleas, these measures help prevent the spread of the infection, and rapid response systems have significantly reduced the incidence of plague outbreaks. Public health officials are now better equipped to respond to potential outbreaks, ensuring that the disease is contained and treated swiftly. The combination of medical advancements and proactive public health strategies has transformed the once deadly plague into a manageable condition. The bubonic plague has left an indelible mark on human history, its devastating impact etched in the annals of time. This deadly disease, caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, has been responsible for some of the most catastrophic pandemics in human history. One of the most infamous outbreaks, the Black Death, ravaged Europe and Asia in the mid-14th century, killing an estimated 75 to 200 million people. This pandemic, which lasted from 1347 to 1351, decimated populations and left entire regions in ruin. Originating in Central Asia, the plague spread along trade routes carried by infected fleas on rats aboard merchant ships. These trade routes, which were the lifelines of commerce and communication, became conduits for the deadly pathogen, facilitating its rapid spread across continents. The Black Death's arrival in Europe in 1347 heralded a period of unprecedented suffering and social upheaval. As the disease spread from port cities to inland towns, no community was spared from its lethal grasp. Cities were decimated, with bodies piling up in the streets faster than they could be buried. The sheer number of deaths overwhelmed local authorities, leading to mass graves and hasty burials, often without proper rites or ceremonies. The plague spared no one, striking down rich and poor alike. Nobles and peasants, clergy and laypeople all fell victim to the disease, highlighting the indiscriminate nature of the pandemic. Fear and panic gripped the population, leading to social breakdown, religious fanaticism, and the persecution of marginalized groups. 
In their desperation people turned to extreme measures including flagellation and scapegoating in an attempt to appease what they believed were divine punishments. The Black Death's impact extended far beyond its immediate death toll. The demographic collapse reshaped societies, leaving vast tracts of land abandoned and altering the course of history. The massive loss of life led to labor shortages, economic decline and political instability. With fewer workers available, wages rose and the feudal system began to crumble, paving the way for significant social and economic transformations. The plague's devastating consequences forced societies to confront their mortality, prompting profound changes in art, literature, and religious beliefs. Artists and writers grappled with themes of death and suffering, while religious institutions faced challenges to their authority and practices. The Black Death serves as a chilling reminder of the plague's potential to disrupt and reshape human civilization. Its legacy is a testament to the fragility of human societies in the face of nature's most formidable adversaries. While the Black Death remains the most infamous outbreak of the bubonic plague, the disease continued to plague humanity long after the 14th century. In the 17th century, the Great Plague of London swept through the English capital, killing an estimated 100,000 people. The plague's arrival in 1665 brought terror to the city, as people desperately sought to escape its deadly grasp. Houses were marked with a red cross and the words, Lord have mercy upon us, a chilling reminder of the disease within. In the 19th century, a third pandemic of plague emerged in China, spreading to Hong Kong and other parts of Asia. This outbreak, which began in the 1850s and lasted for several decades, had a devastating impact on China, killing millions. The plague's spread along trade routes highlighted the interconnectedness of the world and the challenges of containing infectious diseases. These later outbreaks, while not as devastating as the Black Death, served as grim reminders of the plague's enduring threat. They underscored the importance of public health measures, such as sanitation, quarantine, and disease surveillance in preventing and controlling future outbreaks. 